Good morning, everybody. Um, so when my partner and I celebrated our first Christmas together a really long time ago, I gave him this card with this quote on the front, dwell in possibility. It's a really romantic notion and sort of looking ahead at all the things you'll do together. Notice the sunrise, the symbol for new beginnings. I had a version of this card on my wall in my room as well, where I have some pictures of my kids and things I like to see when I wake up. And a few years ago, I came to realize that my card should really look a little bit more like this. I certainly wasn't living up to the dream of diving headfirst into life's possibilities. And I found myself forever busy, consistently able to rationalize away all the reasons why I was taking a back seat to the opportunities that were in front of me. My thought process usually went something like this. Do you want to go camping this weekend? And my brain would immediately conjure up a rapid fire list of the reasons why this was not possible. What are we going to eat? Oh, I'll have to go shopping. My shoes need those new laces. Oh, my son has a football match. Who's going to take him? Oh, my raincoat is at school. Who's going to feed the cat? Oh, I've got that meeting on Monday. What time do you think we can be back? So all of the reasons why this was suddenly not possible, they all made sense. They were all valid in my mind. But what I realized is that I was impacting my general attitude and my outlook. So. I opened up this magazine that I'd brought home. This is pre-COVID um, about paper crafts. I had some intention that I was going to, you know, do some of these paper crafts in this magazine. And as I opened it up, I was flicking through, and there was this article in there about the power of yes. I don't know what it was doing in a paper crafts magazine, but there it was. And it said this: "Yes is a powerful statement of positive intent." that summons an expansiveness in our energy and consciousness. A fully embodied yes taps into our pleasure centers. It helps reconnect us to our creative flow, our intention, our passion. And I felt alive just reading that. Yep, yeah, sign me up. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to tap into their pleasure centers and reconnect with creative flow? Yes, I'm doing this, I said. There's actually something remarkable that happens in our brains when we say yes. It's a shift. It's a door that opens and a space where our mind begins to make things possible, like a flick of a switch. Similarly, when we say no, a door closes and that switch gets flicked off. It's quite a negative space to be in. Just think about how it feels when someone says no to you. The passion you've brought to the table and someone says, no, not interested. It actually releases a stress producing chemical in the brain. Just think about a simple shift in language from something like say no to junk food to say yes to eating healthy or making healthy choices. They're basically the same goal, but one is a constant battle. It's a war that you're waging, always trying to fight against something. But the other feels so much nicer. And it's all made possible by that simple shift in language. So what does this look like? Well, the magazine had this lovely set of 3D letters to cut out and put together, which I did, you can see. And I put them up on a shelf in my living room as a way to remind myself of my new intention to say yes more. And guess what? It actually works. So instead of thinking, nah, I'm not jumping in the lake today. I just washed my hair. I don't have a change of clothes with me. I just jumped in. I went camping. I went on that weekend hiking trip. And somehow all those barriers that I had so readily conjured up before weren't there. Because when you start with yes, you enter a space where you are now trying to make something possible. Strangely enough, the opposite was happening at school. I was that person who was pushing people to say yes, to try something new. In my role as the ed tech integrator and working in the makerspace, I was hearing a lot of no. 
as I would suggest steering a unit towards something with robotics or a STEM project that I was super excited about. And no matter how I approached it, I kept hearing no. In our school, we often use the phrase circle of influence. And it's kind of a phrase that annoys me sometimes because it'll be used in a way of, well, that's really not in your circle of influence, Kim. But I thought to myself, you know what? My time is in my circle of influence to a degree. And so I drafted a proposal for eight weeks of standalone robotics and coding lessons for every grade level. I was going to give the teachers free lessons. Who doesn't wanna sign up for that, right teachers? Free lessons. So I uh, took it to my principal and she said, yes. And all of a sudden it opened the door to all of this great stuff. The kids were buzzing, I was buzzing. I was in a space where I was doing and creating and thinking alongside the kids. And we shared our projects with the class teachers at the end of that eight weeks and more doors began to open because they saw what that yes could do. This is the yes that I call the to hell with it, I'm doing it yes. <laughs> I highly recommend it. We have a lot of shifts to make in education. And when we talk about student agency, voice, choice, personalized learning, project-based learning, flexible learning spaces. All of these things require us to say yes to something. Yes to trying something new and the fear of not knowing if it's going to work out or not. And when we allow ourselves to say yes, we open that door where our minds can create, plan, solve, wonder, and truly dwell in possibility. So what are you going to say yes to?